Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar. We have a few people. Everybody's just starting to come in the door here, so I'm going to give it a few minutes before I do my introduction. Uh, but thank you for joining us uh, for our webinar today on efficiently analyzing large-scale whole genome sequencing data. So if you are part of the UKB RAP user community, um, you may not know that we have a community forum. Uh, this is a place where you can collaborate and connect with your peers and colleagues um, that are also doing UK Biobank research, as well as get answers to your questions from DNA Nexus and UK Biobank teams. You can also find uh, the latest news on new data releases, uh, webinars like this one, and um, also just other tools and tutorials that come directly from the community to help your work on the platform. I'll be dropping a link into the chat after I'm finished, but you can scan the QR code there or navigate to uh, community.dnanexus.com. If you are a researcher from a low or low middle income country or an early career researcher, you are qualified for, you might be qualified for the UK Biobank Platform Credits Program. This provides credits for you to work directly on UKB RAP and also allows you to get lower access fees for the tier three data. That's the whole genome sequencing data we'll be talking about today. Um, and so if you meet either of those criteria, you can apply now on the website uh, at UK Biobank that is available via the QR code. And I'll also, again, be dropping that in the chat later for you. If you are a commercial org looking to accelerate your time to insights on UKB RAP, uh, the DNA Nexus is team here to help. We can help you cut the time from analysis to results and get the results you need more effectively and much quicker. Uh, we help through the UKB RAP Accelerator program, researchers navigate the rich uh, data set, understand the insights that researchers can derive from new data releases, like the upcoming 500K release, new data types like proteomics data release that was recently, uh, that will be the final portion, which will be available on RAP later, uh, and develop tools and get the most out of UKB RAP. We have uh, flexible package options available, and you can request more information by scanning the QR code there, or again, I will be dropping another link in the chat for you once I'm finished. If you are already a UKB RAP user, then we would like to hear from you. Uh, what would you like to see on uh, UKB RAP and or help inform our future roadmap? Uh, I'll be dropping another link to a two minute survey uh, that shouldn't take too much of your time there. And you'll be entered to, into our lucky draw um, just for completing the feedback. Uh, we appreciate any input back from our community so we can help make UKB RAP even better. And then finally, for those of you in the audience that are not already UKB RAP users, um, but are UK Biobank approved researchers, the platform is actually a part of your approved application. So you can sign up now and even receive a 40 pound credit just for signing up on the platform. And that's to get your work started. Um, it's an all one one platform. It has cloud infrastructure, a uh, wide variety of analysis tools available and access to all the new UK Biobank data releases all in one platform. Um, so you can follow that bit.ly link or I can drop another link in the chat for you as well as a QR code. Like I said, I think that is enough from me. Let's get to the presentation. Let me pass it over to my colleague, Andre Klempier, to start the presentation. Thanks, Brenton. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Efficiently Analyzing Large-Scale Whole Genome Sequencing Data on UKB RAP. My name is Andre Klempier, and I work as a Senior Community Engagement Scientist at the DNA Nexus. And our today's agenda will cover what is large-scale data on UKB RAP. Uh, we will be showing the general use case uh, with Regen and Jivas. And in some later part, we will be uh, showing tips for how to work with large number of files on UKB RAP. This might be uh, great for your general use case and for in interacting with any UKB RAP data, but uh, as this is an advanced part, we are keeping it as uh, as a large uh, part of this presentation. Uh, we uh, have here some prerequisites. Uh, so for those who are just getting started with RAP and uh, you want to uh, get some more introduction and uh, read about and hear about some more basic uh, terms about RAP, I would recommend watching our overview webinar. And uh, also as optional one, 
I would like to provide reference to already existing end-to-end -end Jivas webinar, uh, which is providing a lot of details and you can uh, deep dive into end-to-end uh, -end Jivas. Uh, we will be covering uh, some examples uh, on Jivas today on whole genome sequencing data. So this might be uh, useful uh, for uh, getting more details about it. So let's start with some overview of the UK Biobank Research Analysis Platform, also known as UKB RAP. Uh, UKB RAP is a cloud-based uh, platform, cloud-based computing platform uh, that hosts UKB data, and it enables interacting with very large, uh, approximately 30 petabytes of genetic and health data for uh, almost half a million participants. And at the same time, it contains uh, analysis suite uh, that enables running bioinformatics software tools and also developing custom workflows directly in the cloud. What is also a big advantage of such platform is that this is a great collaborative space, so you can share your results and analysis with your colleagues. Today, we are mostly covering what is large-scale data and how to interact with large-scale data. And for conducting your large-scale analysis, we can consider the following aspects. So for aspects, we can take into consideration a number of samples. We can also look at storage or actually how big the data files are. Or we can take into consideration compute, how many compute and which instance type you would need for your large scale analysis. When we talk about UKB RAP data, as it was already mentioned, we are, we are working approximately with 30 petabytes of data in total. And what is a big advantage, data is constantly updated. So you can always get uh, the, newest released, the newest release of data. This is not just about raw file format, such as genomics or imaging, but you can work with many files, many phenotypic information, uh, this is very rich resource of data, uh, typically digested into form of database, and this is available in a form of features uh, for uh, and available for your analysis. Uh, when we talk about genomic files in particular, on UKB RAP, uh, there is various uh, type of files. Uh, for example, BGen, Plink, PVCF, or CREM. Uh, you can decide. Uh, which data you would like to use for your use case. But typically, uh, and we will be covering it here, we will be working with whole genome sequencing data in BGen format. And we are considering 200K release and 500K release. And for whole exome sequencing data, we are considering almost 500K release. Uh, to provide more context and to further, uh, further highlight uh, whole genome sequencing data on UKB RAP. Let's take a look at the following table uh, where we compare uh, two largest and two smallest uh, chromosomes, and we will do comparison between 200K and 500K whole genome sequencing data. And as we can see from here, uh, approximately 500K whole genome sequencing is 15 times larger. And uh, typically, for example, just to mention one chromosome for chromosome one, the resulting file size for BGen um, uh, has, uh, is larger than one terabyte. So this is good background for our experiment. So in the next part, let's uh, take a look at running Regeny on large scale whole genome sequencing data. What we will need, uh, let's start with some basic information and some basic introduction to Regeny. So we will be using Regeny app. Regeny app is a C++ pro program for whole genome regression modeling of large genome-wide association studies. And this is available on the UKB app. And basically in, in general, uh, general approach is that this is two-step approach and we will be using uh, various data sets as input. So for first step, we will be using array data and for second step, we will be actually using whole genome sequencing region. What is important uh, at the beginning uh, to mention is that we are here considering uh, QC the data, and we will need quality control for all the input data. I mean, we are 
uh, applying a quality control process to array data as well as to whole genome sequencing data. And uh, we need to uh, prepare accordingly also our samples. Uh, this is related to phenotypic data. So if you want to get more information about it, uh, I am providing here a link to prerequisites and to already existing notebooks, scripts, and uh, VIDL scripts. So for sample data, you can access a notebook. For array data, you can access script. And for whole genome sequencing, you can access VIDL. Uh, everything is available at our GitHub page. So I would recommend to do QC. So now let's, let's continue with some uh, uh, basic uh, workflow and introduction to uh, this uh, two-step process. So for first step, we need to calculate uh, polygenic risk score in Regeni, GVAS, and what we need to specify as inputs, uh, we are considering two inputs, phenotype, phenotypic data, uh, plus array data, which is in form of a Plink file. This is for the first step, and this first step is typically done on merged uh, chromosomes, and it's producing polygenic risk score for each chromosome. Then for second step, in the second step, we are uh, running uh, actually tests uh, and test variant phenotypic uh, association. And for the second step, we would need phenotype, uh, phenotypic data, plus whole genome sequencing data. In this case, it's BGen, uh, plus uh, polygenic risk score, which is now being used as covariate. And this all will result in variant effect, variant effect computation. So this was as workflow. And now uh, let's take a look at the details on the, uh, about the Regeni app on the UKB RAP. So Regeni is a performant, a cost-effective app on UKB RAP. And on UKB RAP, it contains a set of three apps. And uh, we are uh, talking about uh, the following three apps. It's a app Regeni, which uh, serves or which works as orchestration of the following two Regeni apps. The first is uh, app Regeni uh, fit uh, WGR, which runs step one. And then Regeni test associations, uh, which runs Regeni step two. So on the UKB wrap, I would recommend running the newest release, which is 2.0. And this newest release uh, is or has updated Regeni binary. And at the same time, there were made some enhancements and also some uh, changes into input parameters. So for those who are interested, uh, I am here uh, pointing you uh, to the and providing reference to the full documentation page. So you can access it and, and read what, uh, what has been changed in the recent version. And last but not least, uh, there was a change in uh, timeout policy and timeout policy was increased from 12 hours to 48 hours, uh, which is uh, providing more flexibility for your analysis and allowing more variants to be processed. If it's not enough and you would like to extend the timeout policy even more, you can do that, of course. Uh, but for longer running jobs, uh, I would uh, recommend always monitor them and stop them or interrupt them if needed. And uh, now to the actual command uh, example of what you can use to extend time out policy. So for example, you can run from command line interface, dx run app regeny, and what does the trick dash dash extra arcs. That's the part of the command that does, does the trick. And now you can specify in JSON format uh, the following structure which is saying that we are going to change timeout policy by executable. And for each executable, each of these three apps, you can then change the time or the runtime, maximal runtime. So for example, for the orchestration, uh, we are considering 12 hours. And for step one and step two, uh, we just uh, did uh, the change from 12 or 48 hours to uh, 200. Perfect. So now let's talk about managing job priority because this is very important uh, when you consider which type of 
uh, priority you can choose and how to decide uh, what would be better for your use case. So there are three levels or three options. Uh, the first uh, mentioned here is high priority, also known as on demand. And typically you would use it uh, for workloads uh, that uh, need to be executed as soon as possible and the highest level of re reliability. Uh, then we are considering here, we are mentioning here low priority, which is also known as spot. And spot, you can use uh, spot for some non-urgent workloads uh, that uh, do not uh, need to be uninterrupted. So you are accepting the risk of interruption of the job. And uh, then uh, there is something in between, uh, I would say, and this is called normal priority and how normal priority uh, does behave. So you can use it uh, when you tolerate spot risks in exchange for a lower price. Uh, you can find documentation to all of these three options uh, at the provided link here. Uh, the title of this slide is uh, clickable. And uh, I, would, I, I would also like to tell you about the behavior uh, behind this normal priority. So uh, typically the normal priority job uh, requests a spot instance and it waits uh, up uh, 15 minutes and uh, if the spot is available you will get spot and if, in case it the spot is not available uh, this is then switched to on demand and the same behavior for normal priority also um, applies as default to retry policy and i would like to also provide reference to rate card uh, which will tell you about the cost of these individual priorities. And um, typically the differences in uh, cost is on demand versus spot. And now uh, when you would like to rerun your job using different priority, let's uh, take a look at the at example. So what you can do from command line interface using DX toolkit is DX run dash dash clone. You will specify the job which failed or you would like to rerun the particular one. And then you will specify dash dash priority with the desired priority. In this case, it's high priority. Perfect. So now we have um, a lot of background uh, covered, uh, and we are uh, ready to talk about uh, Regeni experiment and specifying inputs and what we need to prepare for such job on whole genome sequencing data. So I would like to um, show you, uh, we did some, we conducted some experiments and we found out what, uh, what are the factors that are significantly increasing, uh, that are significantly increasing runtime, significantly increased runtime. And you, you should uh, take into consideration number of samples, of course, then number of variants, variants. Um, typically you would need to select a trade type uh, trend trade type is also factor uh, in this regard, and uh, there is an observation. Uh, observation exists uh, that binary trade in general is slower uh, than quantitative, and typically this is the slowest step. So then also please consider number of phenotypes, in, in other words, uh, traits in the analysis. And then what is super important is to always cut down a number of variants. This is related to QC process. Uh, QC process uh, is uh, relevant for removing irrelevant data uh, and uh, cut down the number of variants. And in general, it's a best practice in GVAS. So we would recommend to use it always. If you would like to get some inspiration on how to do QC and actually the whole uh, Regeni pipeline, on UKB RAP, uh, I am uh, again pointing you or providing reference to our end to end GVAS and FIVAS repository. So let's, uh, be before we jump into specifying individual inputs for whole genome sequencing data in BGN format, I would like to show you quickly a screenshot from current Regeni app. Uh, this is something you will see after you click button regeny on the wrap. So this is the window where you will be specifying all the inputs. So now to the individual inputs, uh, let's start 
with uh, step one. And for step one, we would need array data in Plink file format. And in other, other words, we are specifying genotype data. So genotype data, there are three uh, requested uh, inputs and all of them are merged across all chromosomes. We are here considering BAT, BIM, and FAM. And we are working with field, field ID number 22410. This is for step one. For step two, we are getting closer to BGen and we are started working with whole genome sequencing data. In this case, I will show you example on a 200K whole genome sequencing data field ID number two, uh, 24306. And in this case, we are working with a whole genome sequencing data in BGen file format, and we would need to specify all chromosomes. So in this case, we are just showing uh, example for chromosome one. And again, here we would need to specify three inputs. It's a uh, BGen itself containing data, then index file, BGI, and sample file as well. Perfect. So now we can uh, go into and uh, comment uh, about uh, other uh, inputs for a Regeny job. And we would need phenotypic file, which is uh, specifying phenotypes of our interest for our analysis. It's a, it's a, a pheno underscore txt file. Then uh, we can also specify covariate file in the current Regeny app. And uh, then, is, as we were all already mentioning, that QC process is very important. We can specify past SNP list uh, for imputed array SNPs, this list. This is for step one. And then for the step two, uh, extracted uh, text, form, text uh, format, a text file uh, with a SNP list uh, from or with uh, variants that, uh, or locations that passed a QC process for whole genome sequencing data, right? Perfect. There is another option that uh, possibly you may specify traits and covariates in just one file and provide just a pheno file instead of two. Perfect. So we covered the general use case and how we can specify the whole genome sequencing data for Regeny. And uh, we are now ready to do some summary uh, for this part. So we are working with large BGen files. And what we just discussed, uh, we talked about updated Regeny app on UKB app. We uh, told that data QC is very important and best practice for all Jiva studies. We talked about runtime settings and what are the possibilities on UKB RAP. And also we covered priority settings and talked about spot versus on-demand versus normal priority. Perfect. So now we are just getting to the second part. And this part is uh, for advanced users because we will be using some commands uh, using a command line interface. Uh, but I would like to tell you that uh, some steps here will be also helpful for your general working and general interacting with UK Biobank Research Analysis Platform. So let's get started with this part. Let's first talk about potential use cases. So we will have uh, two main areas. In the first set of, of tips, I would like to show you how to effectively plan and organize your analysis. And in the second set of tips, I would like to tell you more about how to best implement tasks. And for how to best implement tasks, just for preview, uh, we will be talking about, uh, for example, running jobs and how we can monitor them, uh, about worker limits and how to optimize that or how to effectively interact with large number of files in the cloud. So first tip is about understanding type of analysis. 
we have two approaches here in our minds. First is that we are considering many independent analyses versus one large analysis. For many independent analyses, I am here considering uh, smallest unit of work, which is here, for example, individual sample. And uh, typical tasks, bioinformatics tasks, would be mapping, variant calling, genotyping, structural variant detection from large cohort, and so on, right? Typically, from the programming perspective and preparing the app or workflow, it's easier problem to tackle. And it's relatively tra transferable. On the other hand, on the other side, we can consider the smallest unit of work uh, for one large an analysis. The unit would be, for example, small genomic region for all samples. And like practical example then would be, for example, joint variant calling on large cohort, cohort right? So with this, it's not that easy as it's not that easy to tackle that problem and you might need specialized techniques to solve that problem. Uh, but sometimes it can be reformulated as many independent analyses. So you should be always uh, thinking about these two and convert between these two if possible and when needed. So second tip is about thinking end to end. This is very important and we should be asking ourselves and the team what should be included in analysis when we plan the uh, research or uh, our data analysis and processing. So are we doing mapping, for example, and what is being generated? Are we doing variant calling? Uh, is our analysis producing plots at some point? And what do we want to... Uh, mm, uh, do with them, right? Or for, or for example, for those researchers who are machine learning engineers, is our workflow uh, training a model at one part and uh, how we should take care or handle the trained models? What is generated and where? And how many files are intermediate or prerequisite for the next stage, right? So these are all questions uh, we need to answer and then effectively plan. So what we can do, uh, typically we should be able to answer questions uh, such as where to out, where the output should go or how the output should be named. So what are the possibilities for us? So for example, we can have all same name, same name, but go to different folders or then all different names, but go to the same folder on the platform. Or we can have like, all different names and go to different folders, right? Uh, this is what we can do uh, in terms of folders. But for example, there is also a question, how to retrieve the output? Uh, should we each produced file upload back to the project um, separately one by one, or it's good idea to first uh, bundle output and upload it to the platform? Uh, all of these, questions and answers uh, might be also, might have some consequences uh, and the, the, on the platform. And there, there is some uh, documentation page uh, on uh, service limits. So I am providing here reference. So for those who are interested, you can see uh, what are the ser service limits for uh, listing data on folder, removing data on folder, moving data, and so on. Tip three is about managing job submissions. So for managing job submissions, uh, here we are considering how to effectively manage jobs. And why? One reason would be uh, to prevent a uh, massive scale of errors and be able to rerun jobs that possibly failed. So what we can do and how we can submit large number of jobs, uh, I have here two options. First and we would recommend this one, we would recommend gradual submission. What this means is that we can gradually scale up the submission and for example, start with just one job, submit it uh, till um, or wait till the end, uh, check if the job or the results were produced as expected, what was the cost, what was the, if the runtime was expected runtime, 
And if everything passed, you can uh, go to the next step, which would be hundreds of jobs. You can submit, check again. Now, var variability in runtime, variability in cost. If everything is according to your expectation, you can then submit the rest. Now, there is also an alternative approach, depending on how many data you would like to submit in total. And the alternative approach would be uh, the fact uh, when you can batch multiple inputs into one job. And for this, there is a detailed documentation page, which kind of combines gradual submission uh, uh, as well as uh, batching up your jobs, right? So I am here pro providing a reference to existing large scale data analysis guide. Another tip for managing job sub submission would be uh, that you have less than uh, 50K jobs in the waiting state on the platform. And uh, there might be some limitations uh, in terms of UI. So when you go to monitor page on the UI, uh, you can there uh, monitor the jobs, show, uh, show the jobs, show running jobs, also show some folders uh, on the project. And uh, some of these UI features might be limited uh, when you work with really, really large scale data. So tip number four is about using metadata uh, to help managing executions. So metadata is a very useful feature on the DNA Nexus. Uh, if you are in interested to getting more, more details, uh, this uh, title is clickable, so you can get a documentation page. And why we are considering this, uh, metadata can help tracking the progress of your analysis. And with this approach, you can identify jobs that completed successfully, or for example, uh, you can restart uh, jobs that possibly failed. So how you can use it? Uh, you can use it, for example, when you would like to filter based on tag, uh, for example, from the monitor page, uh, if you are using uh, UI, or there is a similar approach also for command line interface. So how you can do that, and just to provide an, an example, so there are two options. So there is a tag. Uh, tag is a collection of strings. So you can, for job, you can specify multiple strings, which serve as tags, or there is also option property, which is a key value store. So let's focus here on tags. And example here would be, for example, when you do DX find jobs to find your jobs, you can specify state, for example, uh, dash dash state failed. And if your job had tag, you can then specify dash dash tag and uh, write or mm, insert or specify particular tag. Then if you find these jobs, you can then continue with running new job and for example, rerun. So what you can do via DX toolkit is DX run dash dash clone, clone the found jobs, uh, then specify multiple tags. And for example, as a, as a last tag, uh, we can specify that the job is being rerun. So this is useful uh, for helping, uh, or this is useful to help managing your executions on rail. So now tip number five, and tip number five is about where to submit large uh, batch of jobs. So what we would recommend, uh, there is an option and app existing on UKB wrap, which is called Swiss Army Knife. And what you can do is to upload submission file to project, and then you can use Swiss Army Knife to submit. How you can do that, we would recommend uh, uh, to, and you should make, uh, and and uh, please know that you are, um, uh, make sure to use dash dash detach job for each job uh, in such case, uh, because uh, this will allow, in the, this will allow creating independent job, right? Uh, so this is dash dash, dash detach. Uh, there is also a possibility to specify dash dash head job on demand, uh, which uh, which uh, serves 
for the following uh, use case. And in this case, a uh, head job of an app uh, will be run in an on-demand instance. This is uh, good when you would like to prevent spot interruption of the head job, for example, in workflows or somewhere else. With that, we would like to tell you that we would avoid using interactive workstation to submit bad job and why. Uh, typically, interactive workstations uh, are instances with SSH access, and uh, typically these jobs will be fixed to high priority, right? So what does that mean? So sub jobs uh, from these high priority job would inherit priority from the main job, and this could not be overwritten. So all of these jobs would be all demand. So you don't have control over that. So in the next part, uh, let's uh, take a look at other tips and tricks, how to interact with platform. And uh, there is a point where uh, we would like to talk about uh, concurrent worker and the number. So the default concurrent worker limit per user is 100 and per organization is 500. So what you can do to increase the number of concurrent worker for your account, uh, you can do that by contacting UK Biobank dash support uh, at dnanexus.com. Uh, but uh, please note that uh, you do not max out organization limit and uh, this is not affecting uh, the other users in your or organization. We would like to also tell you uh, more about DXFuse for those uh, who are using DXFuse to mount your data uh, into the worker. Uh, there, is a, there is a current uh, number of uh, supported uh, number of files. So currently DXFuse uh, supports up to uh, 255K files in the directory. Uh, and if you would like to uh, read uh, more out about individual functionalities, so the DXFuse uh, word here is clickable, so you can get GitHub page uh, to find out uh, more about it. And for example, you can also face or encounter some uh, issues in the UI, uh, such as, for example, when you list all the files if you work with really, really big data, or when you specify job inputs in the UI, uh, there might be limit in number of inputs per job. Uh, now to the next uh, set of uh, tips and tricks. And in the next uh, stage, I would like to provide a quick demo and example on uh, how to possibly work efficiently uh, with um, APIs, application programming in interface, and uh, how to avoid too many API calls on the platform. So I uh, performed the following experiment. I used DX Toolkit in two ways. One way was that I ran DX LS command to list content of the folder. And I took the outputs and then filtered results using a grab command on my site. This is not producing API calls. And I was working uh, with uh, uh, cram indexes, cray files, and I compared this behavior and number of produced API calls versus DXLS as well, but in the following setup, when I directly specify the filter as a regular expression uh, on the side of the XLS command. And I compared how many API calls uh, uh, were made. So uh, I did the same experiment for exactly the same data in a folder. And this folder contained approximately um, 10,000 files, 10,000 CRAM files, CRY files. So uh, when we look at the results, I compared time. Uh, so the first option, the first result, uh, when I did first DXLS and then uh, grabbed data 
later was 15 times faster than doing the DXLS and specifying regex, reg reg uh, which uh, might indicate that the DXLS uh, and specifying regular expression is slower and is producing higher number of API calls. And if you would like to do some practical experiment with this and uh, compare how many API calls were produced and what could be possibly faster uh, to do, uh, you can specify environment variable, which is called underscore DX underscore debugs, uh, debug equals two. Uh, and this will show you a number of API calls. So for example, in my case, what I can do, so I can prepend this environment variable uh, uh, to dxls command according to my needs and this will be producing and this will be showing all the api commands done so i can then uh, monitor uh, how many api calls were made so two other tips and tricks uh, for example let's uh, take into consideration the case that you have large number of files or one large file what we can do. So here we would uh, consider, or we would suggest extracting some region of interest before you will run your analysis, just uh, specify or focus on region of interest. So for this, uh, we are considering here two tools. First of them is multitabix. Multitabix uh, mostly um, serve or might serve for extracting variant records for from VCF files. So if you work with VCF files or PVCF files, this might be good choice to work with. Or for example, there is a Plink or Plink2. Uh, Plink and Plink2 are uh, tools which are part of a Swiss Army Knife on UKB wrap. So you can um, uh, use it um, uh, easily. And uh, this is uh, great for interacting and working with Blink and BGen files. And also uh, here, uh, there is uh, another tip and trick, which is uh, that certain operations on folders and files uh, may be subjected to limits. And uh, the trick is in that fact that you can access uh, the following limitation documentation page, and you can read more about uh, how to, what would be limitation and how to work with DX uh, remove, uh, DX move, or DX LS. Perfect. So just to conclude this webinar and what we've been talking about, so we covered and we try to understand why we are talking about large scale and what are the aspects for conducting large scale analysis. Also, uh, we uh, told uh, that researchers can use UKB RAP for the large scale whole genome sequencing or whole exome sequencing analysis, mostly uh, working with genomic files. GVAS can be done using Regeny app. And we should be always thinking and designing end to end. Uh, what, how we can test our programs, our apps, or our analysis? We should always deliver proof of concept, uh, then monitor cost and runtime, and then we can track error and success and rerun if needed. We would definitely recommend gradual scale up. So for those who are interested in knowing more about all of these, uh, there is uh, an existing reading. So I would recommend all of these three. Uh, there is the guide for analyze, analyzing large number of input files. There is also a paper, uh, paper on overall guideline. And there is also existing uh, blog uh, published at Medium. So, with that, I would like to say a big thank you uh, to our DNA Nexus community engagement team and also to UK Biobank site for uh, helping uh, with development of the materials for this web webinar and for uh, continuous uh, help with the questions.